All right, welcome back. So now it's time for something completely different. Uh, if you're about sick of picks, uh, don't worry about it because we're going to do something totally different now. So the thing that we're going to do is going to be PLCs and ladder logic. Uh, so the instead of microcontrollers, we're going to be using PLCs. Um, and then instead of using like C to program these things, we're going to be using a language called ladder logic. So why are we switching topics? Why are we learning something new? Well, partially it's because we want you to have all the skills for your project early, um, and we want to try to use the rest of your time wisely for something. PLCs are what we decided to do. The reason is because they run assembly lines. If you were to go to pretty much any assembly line in the world um, and see like, you know, what what decides if uh, you know the giant arm should come in, it's almost always a PLC. So this is just an assembly line. Honestly, I just picked an assembly line. Um, if you were to look like on this picture and say, you know, where is the PLC? It would be this little controller here that a user can interact with. Typically a PLC has some sort of screen that a user can see and, you know, push a couple buttons. And then there's usually a giant rack of relays. Um, and the relays are kind of part of the PLC system. Uh, they're what turn the motors on and off for the entire assembly line. So all the brains of this whole assembly line uh, go to the PLC and it makes all the decisions. Also, people kind of expect that a mechanical engineer would know how to use a PLC. Uh, they might not expect a mechanical engineer to know how to use like um, a microcontroller, uh, but it's something you really should know how to do. Uh, so we wanted to show you PLCs. So what do they look like? Uh, they come in a bunch of different sh uh, shapes, sizes, and colors. Uh, they work at either AC or DC, uh, which is kind of weird. The one that we're going to use is this guy right here. Uh, so this is just an Allen Bradley uh, PLC. Uh, so I've got one right here. Uh, so this Allen Bradley PLC is an AC. Uh, he actually works at 120 or 240 volts AC. So like comparing this to a pick is kind of ridiculous because a pick works at like zero to five volts and like 20 milliamps and like you could easily go lick every pin on a on a pick and it would not you know like even feel any sort of shock um obviously this guy just can't say it enough 110 volts ac and i mean it, it can kill you right so i mean be more careful with these guys so we're not going to do any wiring with these we're just going to learn how to program them uh but i just thought i would say the uh, the safety warning up front because it should be obvious but i need to say it and i'll say it a few times there are different types. Um, so the one that we work with here is an AC. Um, it is actually becoming fairly common to use DC uh, pit or PLCs. The reason for that is because it's hard to find good sensors that are AC sensors. Um, a lot of sensors these days work in the DC range. But even if you do work in DC, typically it's like, you know, 24 volts DC or 48 volts DC. Um, and typically the amount of current is like, you know, 10 times or 100 times uh, what we use with picks. The other thing is some of them come in modules, right? So you can like add more modules to it later. Uh, but the ones we use is not, it's not modular. It just, it just is what it is. Also, the PLC itself is really just this uh, one spot. This blackboard was added for safety reasons. Um, it's got a fuse and some protection things. All right, so uh, thus far you know that it's something that's used to drive assembly lines, um, and it looks like this, uh, but that's really about all the more you know about it. Um, so let's just kind of start by comparing it to a PIC. So it's similar to a PIC in that it receives inputs, right? So it receives information in, um, and then it has outputs, right? And it is the, the brains behind it. With a PIC, a PIC was just kind of this middle spot um, and then the outputs, we use things like MOSFETs and BJTs, um, whereas a PLC, typically a PLC um, is the brains and the transistors, right? So it's typically the brains, um, and then pretty much they only use relays as outputs. So they pretty much don't use transistors at all. They use relays for everything. A relay, if you remember, it's kind of like a... Um, a mechanical like switch that turns on and off so like typically it's like an electromagnet that actually like pulls a piece of metal in contact to make contact and then the the magnet goes off and it springs away um, and so it's able to turn very very large currents and voltages on and off uh, so that's kind of what a PLC is all about let's talk about inputs and outputs uh, so they're typically simpler uh, so they have only digital inputs 
Um, it turns out that it has eight digital inputs. I don't really feel like drawing eight lines, but I think you get the idea. And then it has four outputs. Um, and again, on this guy, they're all AC voltages, right? So really, this is kind of most similar to, I mean, if you have four inputs, let's just say it was like similar to RA1 through RA7. Sorry, I should have said RA0 um, as inputs. And then like, I don't know, just pick a pick a thing. So RC0 to RC3 is output. So it's kind of similar if you want to think about it as just having like four digital input pins um, and then four digital output pins. Uh, so it's a very simple system. Uh, there are many, many things that make it different. Uh, but today what we're going to focus on is mainly just the simple inputs and outputs. Outputs are easy, right? So outputs, there's two lines on each output. Um, and these would go to, to things like, I don't know, a light bulb, right? Um, and so, you know, you could connect to a light bulb. Really though, they just, they're the two power pins in, um, in like all outlets that you're used to seeing, right? Um, so if you were to have a wall outlet, I mean, here's an example of one. Um, they're just those two lines. Those two lines, if you really care about them, are typically called uh, hot and neutral. Um, instead of hot, if you wanted to be more formal, it's really called line. Um, so they're called line and neutral, so they have names. And the way this guy works is he gets its power from up top here. So he has line and neutral come in, and that gives him his power. And then the inputs are, are pretty simple. Um, they are in two states. Uh, they are either uh, floating, um, which means they're connected to nothing, um, or they're connected to hot, right? And here's a simple little diagram of what that looks like, right? So you have the PLC, uh, and then you've got the PLC definitely is connected to the common, which is the same as the word neutral, right? Um, and then the inputs are either connected to hot um, or they're floating, and that's the only two states they could be in. So it's very different than like a pick, because a pick you would never leave something floating. You would either connect it to 5 volts or to ground as an input, uh, but PLCs are different, right? Um, so again, even on the input side, it's like don't like watch up, don't walk up and touch an input because it's also using 110 volts uh, AC. Um, and then the switches are are typically um, you know normally open or normally closed, which we'll talk about later. Um, and they can be more than just push buttons, right? So they can actually be like brake brake beam circuits, uh, float sensors, a number of different types of sensors. Uh, but this is kind of what the basics look like, uh, and there are eight of them. There are eight of them on our PLC, I should say. In order to control a PLC, you're going to write stuff called ladder logic. Uh, here, we're going to go into ladder logic in great detail, but here's just kind of a quickie little uh, example. Um, in this, you're saying if I have an input one and if I have an input two, um, if this guy is on and this guy is on, then turn on the output Q1. So the I's are labeled I1 through I8. It is not zero based. And the Q's, the outputs, are labeled Q1 through Q4. Uh, this language is called ladder logic. Um, and the reason it's called ladder logic is quite simply, it looks like a ladder. So when you make a bunch of it, it kind of looks like rungs on a ladder. It's one of these situations where that was probably the informal name at some point, but it became the formal name. Like it really is called ladder logic now because it looks like a ladder. Um, so don't don't overthink it, right? So it just kind of looks like that. And then sure enough, people call each of these rungs. Uh, so each little piece of code is a rung on the ladder logic. So kind of comparing the two, I mean, I think you've got the idea. Um, PLCs are big power, um, you know, AC or very high DC. Um, they're also, you know, to be honest, rather simple, right? So there's eight digital inputs uh, on the top. Technically, I wrote plus four, and that's because there are four little push buttons on here. Um, so there are actually 12, but the push buttons are more for, like, a user. Um, and then there are really just four outputs, right? And they're all digital. There is no analog. If you compare it to a PIC, a, a PIC is very different, right? A PIC is very low power. In fact, that's their whole thing. They want to work on batteries. They want to stay as low power as they possibly can. Um, it has, like, our pick is simple, but it has, you know, closer to 40 pins. Uh, technically, there's, like, you know, 33. Um, but it's got a whole bunch of pins. And if you look at these pins, they can do all sorts of crazy things, right? They can be 
analog, they can be digital, they can be a PWM output, they can be an interrupt. Um, way more complicated than PLCs. PLCs are really interesting to me because they've kind of taken over um, and they're such a simple thing. I just think it's neat whenever something simple kind of wins the battle. Um, but they're really easy to use and they can do, they can do big, big power. All right, so I think that's it for the uh, the little brief introduction. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install uh, PicoSoft, uh, which is the uh, program we're going to use uh, to work with these guys. All right, see you then. Bye.